Hello and welcome to Infinity. Soft light is a blend mode that is particularly tricky in calculation and in fact there are multiple different ways of calculating it. So if you want to see all of them go to the Wikipedia page on blend modes and there's lots of maths in there that will delight you no doubt. So let's have a look. Uh, soft light then is the second in the contrast group which by and large means making the light lighter and the darks darker. And there's a gradient way of looking at this and uh, let's do this with Affinity Photo. So let's take the base layer here which goes from 0 to 1 across here or from black to white. The blend layer on top goes in the vertical direction so it's like the Y going from 0 to 1. And then if we set the blend mode of that to soft light you can see the effect you've got there. And you can see here blacks from the base layer stay black, whites stay white. And you get a different effect when the a blend layer is dark down here as you do when it's white up here. So let's have a look at that over here. So there's a base layer going from 0 to 1 that way and the blend layer going from 0 to 1 that way, dark to light. And when we blend them together we get this. So we got this so when base is 0 when it's dark it's always going to be dark doesn't matter what the blend layer is. Similarly when the base is white, this is white, which is nice because it means it preserves the blacks and the whites. So what else? If you slice off this layer here, you can see that there's a lot dark down here. See that here the dark sand starts fading off down here. Here it goes a long way. So in other words, when the blend mode is dark, it makes the base layer darker. So it's darkening the darks. And up here when the blend layer is light it's pushing it back this way so it's making the base layer lighter so it's lightening the lights. So it's doing its job, it's doing contrast, darkening the darts and lightening the lights. So let's go a bit further into this. So a basic calculation which we're going to explore in a little bit of detail is this. So the result is 2 times the base times the blend value plus the base squared times 1 minus 2 times the blend. And uh, we can play around this with putting it into a formula in which we just we make base x and blend y and then we can start plotting it on graphs. And we do this. In fact when you plot it because you've got x and y's in here for a third variable which is the result you need a 3D plotter. And if you look online you'll find a number of plots so I used one here called geogebra.org slash 3D. So here's that formula from the previous page. Twice the base times the blend plus 1 minus 2 times the blend times the base squared. And if you put that into a 3D plotter you get this. So you've got the base going in this direction, the blend going backwards that way and upwards you've got the calculated result. So what does this work out like? Well a way to do this is start setting x's and y's to 0 and see what happens. So down here if I set x to 0 then any value up or down here is always still going to be x0 like that up here. But it's not also it's always going to be 0 and you can of course because you stick x is 0 there and there the result's going to be 0. And this is what holds the blacks to be black. At the other end we got x is 1 then r is 1. So we put 1 in here you get 2y, r is 1 there you got the minus 2y so you got the 2y minus the 2y giving you just the 1. In other words this is what holds the white as white. Then what else we can do down here is we set y to 0. This disappears here that disappears here we're left just with the x squared. So you've got the result is equal to x squared and you've got a parabola. 
and so you get a curve down here and this is like where you have curves and you pull down the curve and you get this shape. In fact, let's have another look at in this here. So let's just take that one off there, go to the bottom one here. Uh, in fact, it doesn't matter because we're just going to look at the curves. So if I got the curves here, if I take a middle point and pull it down, notice what you get here is, so I'm darkening it. Down here I've got the curve here, above it it's fairly linear, so this looks like a part of that parabola. So see that here, you've got that curve, more curved here and kind of straighter up that way. So it, the dark is done nice and gently, just like you're using curves. At the other end, up here, I've got y is 1, put y into 1 here and you end up with minus x squared plus 2x, which gives you this curve, which is like pulling up the curves control, which makes things lighter. And then it just smoothly joins together all the way down. Isn't that neat? So, just in terms of this, in terms of the mass, that quadratic parabola here, that's the parabola shape. We're only interested in this 0 to 1, 0 to 1 here. Don't care what it does elsewhere. So we've got that shape of the curves being pulled down. The other way around, we've effectively got the parabola going up and over this way. And now we've got the shape of the curves being pulled up. So that's quite fun. However, you may notice here, effectively, it's the weighting is towards the blacks, which is kind of good. And up here, its weighting is pulled up to here. Would it be nice if the weighting came down here? And like that. And for that, we'd need a different equation here. We need to y equals x to the 0 0.5, in other words, the square root of x. And in fact, the way that it's calculated by Photoshop and maybe even Affinity Photo is you have that initial one like this, but also, because that's when it's, when it's darker, because the blend is less than 0.5. And otherwise, you've got a different formula, which is this one, which you get this one in here. Again, just substitute base for x and blend for y, and you'll get the result. And so this is what that works out at take that uh, equation and you've got this here. You've got funny stuff down here, but you have got this up here. Wouldn't it be nice if we just take the upper bit of this and then use the other one down here? So I'd like this, so that other one, so the previous one, we take the top bit, so when blend is greater than 0.5, and this one, we take the bit down here when the blend is less than 0.5. And you glue them together, what we're going to get is the blue one, which is, goes up here, and it goes underneath the red there, and the red one here, which goes kind of underneath there. And by snipping them together with the power of Affinity Photo, of course, we get it looking like this. So we've got a smooth surface, so we've got a smooth transition, but now the curve goes this way as before, but there it goes up more down towards the blacks rather than going up towards the whites, and that's how is how we make the soft light blend mode. Just one more note. In the W3C, there is another formula. So we've got this calculation here, which is a bit more complex because you also got a G in here, which is all this stuff as well. So in other words, it's just even more of the same sort of thing. And you could work this out in a similar way. Anyway, that's it. I hope you found that interesting and thank you very much for watching.